it's me and Danielson. Good morning. So I'm gonna give you a little food right now. This clip coming up, customer has some flood damage and needs me to move some pipes. So let's see, maybe it's entertaining, maybe it's not. And then we'll go off to a service call for a boiler. Stay tuned. Make sure you thumbs up, subscribe, and check him out. Daniel leaks a lot, HVAC, and this guy's not moving. That effing moron right there is sitting at a green light because he's a moron. Don't you know that from New York we drive with a purpose? Oh, it's that guy right there, not paying attention. Not paying attention. See this? You're slowing down for the, a cop car two lanes over. Are you stupid or something? And he's wearing a mask in his car. Oh my God, he's wearing a mask alone in a car. Oh. You know, I could put in that ECM motor and people would yell me, how come you use a quick swap board? Yeah. Well, good morning. Good morning. So I'm confused. Yeah. You live on, like, on a castle in it on top of a hill. So what possible storm damage did you have here? Uh, it, I think it comes out from... The ground? Yeah. Really? Yeah. How bad? Just grab that door in there. Oh, you have it? You fixed it. No. But now it doesn't want to close. It's... It's just the... So how much water do we have down here? Um, it was just in the utility room. Oh. But uh, what we would like to do uh, what we would like to do we're gonna have uh, like some pumps put okay. in the wells. Yes. And you see those wires? Those yes. They're from the air conditioning. For the unit upstairs on the top top floor. I don't know. Yes, I know. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Even though I didn't put in, but I know yes, we followed them. Yes, put in. But, um, you need those moved. Yeah. Okay. I guess put around. Or... Okay. Just that? Yeah. Okay. I love that that's just like... Say it's... It's cake. Kind of. Well, not really. But it's... Well, you make it sound like cake. Exactly. But everything down here was good? Well, it came uh, through that. It and well. and uh, it was all over here and uh, mostly in there. Okay. The equipment didn't, nothing got damaged? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, everything works, uh, good. I mean, I was like, I was you, like you, this place is gonna blow. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. All right, good. Excellent. Let me take a peek outside uh -huh. and we'll uh, take some measurements and let's see how we're gonna reroute it though. Yes. Because I need your input on that. Hey, hey, it's Jerry. How are you? Thank God, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Get a little bit of water here? Yeah. Or oh, we could do whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. A little bit of water? Gotta call the pipe doctor. That's right. Yeah. Get your pipes. Yeah. Hi, how are you? Good, this how are is you? your this son. Is... No, it's not my son. Daniel. Daniel. It's not your son? No. Relative? No. No? No. no. Just found them, you know. He's a stray. Walking along the street. He's a stray. <laughs> he was a stray and we found them. We scooped them up. Okay. Yeah. So, so you make, you're making that window well larger. Well, we're going to put in um, a little larger, but they're going to they're gonna put in a drainage there. Okay. Because the... Uh, We've had this problem before, but it's just never been this bad. To this degree. The window wells fill up with water. Okay. And usually, you know, they start to fill up, but then the rain stops and then they drain out. But it's progressively been getting worse. So now... So now that pipe's in the way. Correct. All right, let's go see that pipe. Because we need to discuss how we want to reroute it. Because that goes from the unit in the attic, well, the, your third floor, to that outdoor Mitsubishi right. unit. Right. We didn't put it in, but I know it's a long run. <clears throat> yeah. And we've had that problem where you have to keep putting in. Uh, yeah, that too. Now these we put in. Yeah, these are good. Yep. Right, these are good. So here's this unit. Now. So what? Oh. what uh, oh. to remind you, I know I've been sorry for all the crap. That's all good. So. <laughs> Piping runs over. Correct. And then we have that false leader that the pipes run into, but they run through the window well. Yes. They run so across here. The window well guy's saying, look, if, uh, we got 
gotta move the pipes, otherwise I can't prevent water from getting in there, which is just gonna make things worse. So, question is, so they use this this leader here to conceal to conceal the piping. Right. Um, this disconnected, by the way. Your storm drain. Right there. Now, uh, Can we? And those just cover that uh, flex, yeah. flex pipe. Just covers the pipe. Can we? Um, can I like take turn them this way? They come across. Or do you want not want to see them? I'd rather not see them. You'd rather not see them. All right. Can we bring it forward and I hate to just lay them on the ground, but we'll co cover them in something like this that they use. Yeah. Yeah. Is that okay? Well, so we'll come out. If they come across, if we come across the brick. Well, not the brick. Well, if they come, yeah, but if I come across this way with it, I could use, they make like a, a, a brown cover specifically designed yeah. for that. Yeah. It's, it's not like round like the other ones are. Yeah. But they do make a brown cover, and I, I can't transition from this material no, to that. You. But you. you know, I could I could turn them, and I can come across, let's say here, and I would have to bend around this, right? Again, I have to use one of those flexible connections that they make, and then come across here, and then go to there. Again, it's not. You tell me what you want to do, and we'll make it happen. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to do it on the ground. What I'm afraid of is people are going to step on it because those are, those are copper, right? Correct. But I, I, you know, they use this corrugated like drain pipe that we could get more of. And again, it, it's in the bushes, but how how far from the house is this well getting oh, it's extended? No further. It's, All right. It's maybe. It's basically the same thing. It's just it's. Yeah. It's um, it's got a pump in it and stuff like that, and they they gotta redig all of it. Uh, the drains are all clogged. Uh, oh, I gotta fix this. I'm gonna get rid of this. Get rid of this crap here. Okay. So it all depends on what you, how you want want me to do it. Okay. Covers attached to the brick, or extend what you have, yeah. and go that route. Yeah. Okay. Do you see how I feed you? Don't you know that I love you, and you love me, and we're one big happy family? Facts. Look at this guy right here. Hey, stay in your lane there, buddy. <sighs> People. I don't know. The trolls are going to come out like, Mikey Pipes, you drive like an idiot. You think I drive like an idiot? No, I think you're a really good driver. Exactly. Exactly. I agree. I'd say reckless, but smartly reckless. Smartly reckless? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here is good food. Stay tuned. Good morning. Right. We're here for guest boiler service. Yes. What does that mean? Yeah, that just means could you tune me up and make sure I'm running for the winter. Okay. There's nothing wrong that I know of. Perfect. Lead the way. Right. Thank you, ma'am. I'm going to lock this because you don't know what comes off of the shelf here. Yeah? I agree with you. A neighbor across the street, her mom pulled up with her car. Yeah. Right there, running, got out, went to the door. Mother says, how did you get here? Where's your car? She's like, it's right as it's going on Mill Road. They came right off Mill Road and took it. She wow. She shouldn't have left it running. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but that's just obscene. So I, I locked that door because okay. you don't know who's out. Right. You're, you're right. You don't need to know that. <laughs> no, it's all good. I'll you know, just share it with you. Oh, little baby Will McLean. Look at that. Yeah. All right, Daniel. Let's find a light switch. Oh, it's uh, over on the wall behind the water boiler. Huh. The water heater. Well, yeah. Not to correct you, but no. all right. So um, it hasn't been looked at, as you can see from 2017. Um, Universe, done. okay. I've had work done in the house, and I know there was a lot of stuff flying around. All right. I just want to make sure, you know, when I go to turn it on. Agreed. Then I'll take a look at the combustion chamber, see if there's any dirt in there that warrants us getting the vacuum. Dirty. Okay. All right. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna grab tool bag. We're gonna grab the Testo. We're gonna grab the uh, sh little shop vac, and we're gonna uh, clean out the combustion chamber. Take all the burners out. Make sure they're nice and clean. All right? You've done it before? No. 
We took out the one on the pool heater, but... Okay, something similar. All right, that's what we need to go do. That's first things first, turn off the power switch. Okay, let's turn that to pilot. Or you can leave it alone, doesn't matter. Not to off, but now the pilot's out, so you might as well turn it to off. Remove that plate. Move. That plate. Block in the combustion one. chamber, yep. remove the screws fully you could just loosen them up to remove that combustion chamber plate on some models that plate will also contain the what is it called on some models what may be on here um roll out switch oh you know the okay. thermal disc yeah okay now take out each burner one by one okay is it clean i mean the orange stuff doesn't look like it's clean to me what, the orange stuff? Around, uh... That's fine. It was working before, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll test, if you want, we could test the millivolts on the thermal couple. Okay. Well, vacuumed out the combustion chamber, brushed off all the burners, put everything back together. And then we'll test combustion. Do you, know to, do you know how to test the millivolts on that thermal couple? Um... It's a yes or no question. <laughs> Thinking. No. You haven't been studying, have you? No, I posted I something on. I posted on. something on just the other day. Yeah, I didn't watch that video. Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna hold this down. You're gonna unthread un the thermocouple. You're gonna get the, the multimeter out of the veto, and then we're gonna test. Okay, get the multimeter out. Set it to millivolts. Actually, I don't think that one does it. In my, in my other tool bag, okay. you have to get that multimeter. All right, take those two probes. You can also touch the copper. What do you got? 25. 25. 20, 25? 24. Thermocouple's good. Put the thermocouple back on the gas valve. Anything over 20 millivolts is good thermocouple. If it's under 20, advise the customer to replace. Copy? Yes. All right, now let's make some observations. What does the temperature and pressure gauge read? Pressure is at 50. BSI. Okay. And temperature is all the way down. Um, well, boiler's off, so should be. 70, 60, 80 degrees. Okay. Very good. All right, let's fire up the boiler by turning on a zone. You can also do it down here as well. And you'll do that by taking those two red wires, I'm sorry, the two black wires, which Huh. You can turn it off on the keyboard, have it off. Oh, you don't, you don't have a thermostat on this. The, uh, the main electrical switch is off. It's behind the door. I know, but where's the thermostat for it? It's out here. It's in the living room. I shut off the electricity because I didn't want you to get electrocuted. Oh. <laughs> oh, you have a line voltage thermostat. Something. Yes, okay. <laughs> All right, so there's a switch here. Yeah. Let's turn that on. Big red switch? It's a red switch, yeah. Okay. And now we'll raise this up. Okay. Next, you're going to get the step bit with the drill. We're going to drill a hole six inches above the top of the boiler on the flue pipe. So we can do a combustion test. Approximately.
good. Let's get the Testo out and turn it on, zero it out. All right, so first things first, you need to start doing homework, all right? You're not doing homework. This probe goes halfway in the middle of the flue breaching, all right? So let's see if we can get it halfway, right there. Okay. Okay, and then we'll have a more decent number. But you had over 700 degrees stack temperature. This is not an oil-fired boiler, all right? All right. What other numbers are we looking for? Oxygen. Okay, where should it be at? Between. <clears throat> Four to nine percent. Okay, so O2 is at 8.2 percent. All right, carbon monoxide, where should it be at? Less than 50 ppm. And we are at? 45. Well, 28. Or 28, sorry. All right, what other numbers should we be looking at? CO2. Yeah. Okay, let's scroll down. Point six. And where should we be at? 6.5 to 8. Okay, so you're also good there as well. Mm -hmm. So what's what's your opinion, overall opinion with this boiler? Um, this stack so seems high. Yeah, grossly inefficient. Because if you do any testing, you're guessing. All right, you have 608 and 7 degree stack temperature. So six over 600 degrees of waste is going up the chimney instead of going into this house. Right? Yeah. Now that may be a couple of things. You may we may have some buildup on the inside sections of the boiler, right? Yeah. Like carbon present thing, like things like that. But if we had that present, we would also have high carbon levels of carbon monoxide. Because we wouldn't have we wouldn't have complete combustion. So could this boiler use a good scrubbing? Eh, would it be efficient? Would it, would it help? I doubt it. The boiler is just inefficient. Look at how much waste is going up the chimney. Yeah. Right? So what would you recommend? It works, but it's inefficient. They want to spend the money to replace the boiler. Okay. It's facts. Professional opinion. 611 degrees. Yeah. It's like very, very high. All right, now we are testing draft. Negative pressure, very good. Back to the original temperature of stack, which was over 600 degrees. We'll clipboard that, and then we'll print the results with the printer. Oh, no. They replace it all. I say so now. I paid for that circular, and you're telling me I'm going to get the same unit with that circular, but I have to buy your circulator. And you know what they tell me? Yes. Oh, they put the circulator in? No, no, no. The uh, family. Oh, family did. Who I can never get in contact with anymore. Oh. He also told me to replace the boiler. He told me. So you but, tell me. Okay, okay. again, it's it's, it's 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 aged, yes, right. right? But one thing which is which is sad, but it's it's just facts. Ago. No one has ever tested the, the draft or the combustion of the, of the boiler. You know, we drilled a hole, the first hole ever in its, in its existence, to test for that. Yeah. So they were just, you know, I could validate, you know, mm -hmm. how it's how it's acting based on tests that I performed. Yeah. They were just saying that they're just trying to sell you a boiler because yeah. it's old, yeah. but it works. The only thing that's wrong with this boiler is that it's the, the stack temperature, the, the, the exhaust going up the, up the chimney is over 600 degrees. That's just, that's just like sad, <laughs> seriously. An oil boiler is really in that, in that, in that range of exhaust temperatures because yeah. it's not being absorbed. The heat is not being absorbed by the boiler. Now it, it could be because it's dirty inside, but if it was dirty inside, we would see other, other readings that, that correspond to a dirty boiler and we don't see that. Don't we have a dirty boiler? We have a very um, well insufficient or too much oxygen. The, carbon, uh, the CO CO two levels will be off. Yeah. Carbon monoxide levels will be high. Yeah. But carbon monoxide levels are, are fine. It's like twenty eight or thirty, and we have a printout of it. It's going to be inside of the boiler, which we put right here. And yeah. other than, other than the, the temperature, it's fine. Yeah. Well. Now we need to replace the relief valve on your water heater. Though. That's the only thing we need. What did you learn, Daniel? Son. Test the thermocouple. What else did you learn? How to replace the relief valve. Okay. What else did you learn? Um, you need to label the valves. That's uh, correct. You valve to tag everything. The uh, probe in the center to read the direction. Yep, yep. Um, 
higher temperature means it's less efficient. Correct. And most importantly, you learned you learned how to engage with the customer. She was very engaged with us, wasn't she? Yes, yeah, she was. And we fed her a plethora of knowledge. And I didn't try to sell her a new boiler, but I planted the seed in her head. Because there's nothing wrong with that boiler other than a stack temperature. It's just wasteful. And I could have been like the previous plumbers that were there, who never even did a combustion test, who were just saying that it's old and it's inefficient, right? I actually proved that it was inefficient by doing a combustion test, but not also being a pig about it either. There's nothing wrong with her boiler. It's just wasteful. It's safe. Carbon oxide levels are fine. O2 levels, CO2 levels are fine. It's just wasteful and stack temperature. But we planted the seed, right? And we also told her about the service plans that we offer, that we all do all phases of plumbing, right? Left off by saying that. But she got educated, but she's a smart woman. She's not gonna get bamboozled. No bamboozling her. All right, let me get your thoughts and feedback down in the comments section down below. It's Friday, 10.30. We gotta go swap out a condenser and put in a TXV. Maybe I'll feed you with some more great content. If not, be well, God bless, stay safe.